So, I know it can be hard to come up with ideas for your GCSE art, especially if you're just about to start a new book, because you want it to be perfect. After all, you're gonna be spending hours diving further into whatever theme that you choose. So it needs to be something that you enjoy and that you find genuinely interesting. Hi, I'm Genevieve and welcome back to my face. And today I'm gonna be giving you guys a list of themes and ideas for your book as a whole and giving you some tips on how to narrow down and actually pick your theme. Don't forget to subscribe. It still feels so cringy saying that. <laughs> So first off, I've come up with a list of ideas, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot them rapid fire at you. Traps, Alice in Wonderland, food, imagination, nature, in the home, technology, what the hell is up? Man, I'm sorry, I'm really cringe. If you wanna click off, you can right now. <laughs> Don't blame you. Expression, obsession, characters, emotion, objects, fantasy, masquerade, scenes, manipulation, exploration, invention, paradise, construction, freedom, festive and not just Christmas I mean like any kind of festivities you want mechanisms animals time the mind books retro crime and finally controversial now that list is in no way exhaustive and I'm also in no way saying that if you do pick one of these themes that you will do better or anything like that they're just a few ideas that you can use and they can be interpreted in so many different ways so now that you have some themes to pick from you have to decide which one to choose now as you can see a bunch of those themes are actually pretty Pacific Pacific Specific, not the ocean. But yeah, a bunch of them are pretty specific, like Alice in Wonderland. And then some are a lot more broad, like imagination. Now, if you're a person who doesn't like to con I cannot speak today, I'm sorry. Now, if you're a person who doesn't like to confine their creativity and someone who wants a lot of different paths to go down or is still unsure about the theme that they really want to stick to, then I would highly suggest picking a pretty broad theme as you can always narrow it down later. And this leaves space for development, which I will point out the examiners seem to love. So for example, you could do what I did, which is where I picked a really broad theme like imagination. And then I decided later that I wanted to focus on books and characters with sort of an Alice in Wonderland inspiration integrated into my work. Now, if you want to start off with a highly specific theme, then you need to be prepared to link other ideas in with it because this will help the whole development aspect as you can't just keep doing the same pictures and things of exactly the same object and in exactly the same style. So be prepared to come up with a lot of different interpretations of ways that your a more specific theme can be taken and interpreted in. And be prepared to integrate loads of different ideas into your final project. As I said, I can't speak English today. Into your final product is what I meant to say. So overall on that note, if you pick a broad theme, then you're able to narrow it down to show development. And on the other hand, if you pick a specific theme, you have to link and layer ideas to show a progression of thought. Now, when picking a theme, you also have to think about how much time you're able to invest and put into your work, as well as where your talents actually lie. For example, there is no point doing a whole theme just on trees, just because you really like trees. Even if you know you suck at drawing them and that it would take forever for you to learn to act English and even though it take forever for you to learn how to actually draw them I mean yes it would be good for development's sake but more in terms of hoping that you actually get better at drawing them rather than a development of an actual idea so yes pick something that you like but more so something you already have at least a little bit of experience with and that won't be more time consuming than need be because trust me time takes up once again time takes up no Art takes up so much of your time already, or at least it will do. I know it took up a lot of my time. And then in addition, try to pick a theme that you can take photos for yourself because examiners like to see where you got your inspiration from and they like to see the buildup of your project or your piece from scratch. And the fact that you're not copying anyone else and you're actually using your own visuals to start off and create the idea from scratch. And if you're thinking right now, well, yeah, I don't want to draw from pictures. I don't want to be realistic. It's always best to start off with a photo and manipulate it to whatever the hell you want later. Like you can take a picture of your room and then you can take a picture of a grassy field and then merge those to within your work and draw it however you want so that you at least have reference points and showing where your idea came from. Other than that, if you guys have any more questions, don't be scared to drop them down in the comments below. I'll try to reply to as many as I can. And if you're confused about any of the points or want some help on your work, I don't know, then also drop a word in the comment down below or add me on Instagram.
Instagram or something where you can message me there. Same way I've actually had a couple people already do and I've actually tried to help them as best that I can. And another reason you should add me on Instagram or Snapchat is because I'm gonna be doing a Q&A next week, hopefully, as long as I get enough good questions by then. So if you have any questions to ask me, it does not have to be art specific. Actually, preferably not art specific. I'd like to be more like, I, English. I'd like it to be more of a personal Q&A kind of video so you guys can get to know me a little bit. Then go and add me, as I said before, on my social media and ask me some questions. And also, if you guys want a shout out, I'll be doing those as well. So if you want one, just let me know when you ask my question, my question, your question. So yeah, basically enough of that. Just go ask me some questions. I've literally just said questions way too many times in a row. Okay guys, so that is the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it was at least a little bit useful. And if it was, don't forget to drop this video a like, give it a big thumbs up. As I said before, comment down below. And of course, most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to see my face again. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh my God, guys. And I can't believe I almost forgot. I want to thank you all massively for helping me hit 1,000 subscribers before New Year's. That is actually insane. I think I hit 1K in about six months, that means, or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. But I cannot express how thankful I am for you guys helping me reach that. Like, it's actually insane. Like, that's kind of like a small town or a small village. I don't, I don't know. I don't really care. I, I just, just, it's amazing, okay? It's amazing. So, thank you. And that's kind of what the whole Q&A thing is gonna be for, basically a 1K subscriber Q&A thing. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, thank you for subscribing. If you are subscribed, and if you're not, of course, join me because I'm only going upwards. And you'll be able to say you were with me from the beginning. <laughs> well, at least let's hope I keep going upwards. But yeah, love you all. And I will see you in the next one. And for real this time, bye. <laughs>